This is Tropical Talk Radio in the air conditioning in Davao at the round table. Let's play the intro music. Yeah, buddy, you've downloaded Tropical Talk Radio, where we talk about all things entrepreneurship, travel, and lifestyle. If you're interested in more about this program, check out tropicalmba.com. And if you sign up for our mailing list, I will personally send you 50 free podcast episodes that take you along on our journey and expose the insider story on how we started a million-dollar, honest-to-goodness product business while we traveled the globe. You guys are looking at me like it's kind of whacked up. Podcasting is a performance, people. I thought the music was coming out. I was just yeah. waiting for the music. I don't hear any music, man. Uh, I know you're going to hear on the show. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> is that, is that a good drop? All right. Here's the, okay. Here's the deal. I'm not going to introduce. Uh, I do not have a classy group of friends. We. This has been very much gone over on the podcast. Instead of me introducing you guys, I want each of you to give a sales pitch for one of the products or services that you're currently offering. How about we start with... Uh, you. Yeah, outsourcing for startups. You can uh, check out our site. <laughs> oh, come on. No. That is the strongest title I've ever heard. I've got sales pitch. Oh, yeah, let me show you how it's done. Back up, back up, back, back up a second here. Right. I'm talking about elevator pitches. We just met in the elevator. I know I'm putting you a little bit on the spot, but just tell me who you are, what you sell, how you help people. I'm Damian Thompson. I'm the founder and CEO of Lynchpin. We help startups gain new users faster, retain subscribers longer, and maximize profit per sign up on their email list. Hang on the rim, Damian. What's uh, up? What do you got, Magnati? <laughs> my name is Joe Magnani. I have two sides of my company. One is outsourcing for startups, which I'm going to let my business partner talk about. And then the other is AdSense Flippers, where we help people build niche sites, and get them started on the internet for free. Or if they feel it's too complicated and they have more money than time, they can buy those sites directly from us. Good stuff. I'm sure many people are familiar with you and many DCers are familiar with Damien. You're <coughs> the most famous DCer by, by a long shot. And you're number nine or ten or something. No, I, the thing is that you go to like the members and you see like the notable members. I have never been a notable member on that site. What do I have to do? Really, who do I have to? Oh, we have invoicing area for uh, that. Okay. Oh. So <laughs> fresh booking. <laughs> Missed that. <laughs> JC, I'm Justin Cook. We help aspiring entrepreneurs and people looking to build sites. We show them exactly how to do it so they can quit their jobs. No, you're outsourcing the startup. Oh, guy. that thing, yeah. <laughs> so we, we outsource and we do that stuff. No, we, we build a team. We built a team here in Davao City. And our goal is to show other people how they can build offshore teams to help their startups grow. Yep. And so they can scale their business through process rather than through, you know, it's all going to be through me, a service type business. All can, right. can, we, can we whiteboard your value prop real quick? Is that, is that valuable? No, yeah, sure. Sure, yeah. Let's go okay. for it. What are you talking about? So here's what you want to do. So for your audience, here's what you want to say. You want to say, outsource from startups. We help you retain your equity, you know, lower your capital costs, not have to hire the fourth founder. Right? Yeah. We're, that, that's what you want, right? Benefits value, focus. value, value, yeah. value, value. Not what you do, value to your audience. And I'm Justin Cook, and I'm a badass. Speaking of badass, let's get on to uh, – you guys have grown this blog that I'm absolutely in love with. I call it the, the New York Mini Times of AdSense. 2009, you guys start a blog about the most boring topic humanly imaginable. I mean, a kitten's blog would be more interesting. <laughs> Seemingly so. Says the cat furniture guy. And we all would have came to them. I mean, if you, if I would have came to Damien Thompson in 2009, I said, Damien Thompson, I want to start an AdSense blog. You'd be like, AdSense blog? Are you crazy? Are you fucking crazy? But you held your feet to the fire. 6,000 plus subscribers, over 200K in revenue in one year, right? Right. And, and that was just one year. I mean, there's been an incredible success about something that everybody, it was like a schlep blog, right? That Paul yeah. Graham concept, everybody just thought it was so obvious, right? But you guys had the discipline to follow through. And I want to go through 10 points of fantastic content marketing. Of course, Damien knows about content marketing. So I want to throw some ideas at you guys and get sort of an inside view of what the success mindset is behind, you know, this, this tricky little nut to crack called blogging. Cool. Hit me up. All right. Ready to go? First thing, you guys have... <laughs> <laughs> Hit me up, buddy. <laughs> it's okay. Do you want to talk? David's crying right now. Would it be crying. good to talk? Okay, let's talk a little bit about podcasting and blog personas. Somewhere authenticity. In- authenticity. Let's talk about authenticity on the podcast. Because anybody who knows Joe and knows that he, yeah, he's a pretty hard guy, you know, uh, but he, he's really nice when we turn on the mic. <laughs> and we get off the mic and he says, go fuck yourself. He's <laughs> yeah. not hot money, he's hard money. Yeah. <laughs> hard money. I heard that one thing you said I about doubt. me on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> All right, hold your feet to the content fire. You guys have done an amazing job. How do you, a lot of people when I say, you know, you should write a blog about autoresponders. You should write a blog about 
how to effectively increase your opt-in rates. People say, I can't write about opt-in rates. Because not, that's not my passion, right? <laughs> opt-in rates are my passion, and I just want to let my, my spirit roam, baby. Well, no. how do you do this? Because you're a creative dude. Like, you seem like this kind of guy. You're always reading books. You're always yeah. watching movies. You have a lot of creative ideas, and you're a great writer. Why are you funneling all your great writing talent into AdSense? Well, niche sites don't really don't really make, you know... Don't get me excited. I don't get fired up about niche sites. But I do get fired up about, like, kind of the details of building teams, building out process. And, like, I mean, I look at it like, you know, I, I've heard Chris Tucker say this before, and it's true. Like, we support, like, 30-something families here in the Philippines, extended families. Like, that fires me up. Um, so that's what we're able to do by staying singularly focused on niche sites, right? Right. So if someone's talking about opt-in, talk about opt-in. Like, really dig into that subject and become really good at it, know it really well, talk to the other experts in the area, and be the resource for that. But, no. all, but also, pe people misunderstand the passion thing, right? The reality is, is I know Joe and Justin very well, and both these guys get to follow their passion every day. It's not AdSense. Joe loves process. Joe loves operations. Joe gets turned on by figuring out a better way to, how do I remove one step in a nine-step process to eight steps? He gets excited about that, and he gets to do that in his business every day. Justin likes to create. He likes to connect. He likes to... So it's not the subject matter that matters. It's the, do you get to do the task? And I pimp this book all the time. There's a book called First Break All the Rules. Marcus Buckingham wrote it. The idea is there's 11 things. One of them is, do you get to do every day what you love and enjoy to do? And if you don't, it's a miserable job. You will suffer. If you like what you do, you'll actually be successful. Yeah, I think when, when holding yourself to the content fire, your feet to the content fire. That's correct. Yeah, there's, there's two things that come to mind for me. Number one is a schedule and having like a reliable schedule, that, a realistic schedule that you can stick to. Yeah. Whether that's two blog posts a week or six blog posts a month, I, I, I don't know what it is. You need to figure that out. And then number two is, you know, if you get a little off topic with your blog posts, if not every single blog post has to be about autoresponders if that's what your blog is about. The first blog post I read to you, it was about you in a hammock working your ass off all day. Yeah, that was a really fun post to it's do. It's a personal post. People yeah. get to see behind it the scenes yeah, of your called, business. It's called the AdSense Lifestyle. We're yeah. kind of making fun of the fact that, you know, you're kicking it on the beach, just relaxing. I work one hour a day. Joe's like, bullshit. No, my real job is knocking it out, well, right? Stressed out and whatever. Guys, you guys just proved my point, though. The reality is we didn't talk AdSense. You said yeah. your, your thing was I want to connect. I help people raise their families. If you connect with people, Joe's like you gotta have a process. You have to, how many posts do you have? So here's my whole idea: is that it, right? if you have a personal blog right now, you're blowing your blog content load because all of those posts. Hey mom, I went to Cebu this weekend. Hey mom, check out Deval City. That could all be framed up underneath your business blog, bringing you leads. Right? Yeah, we just Absolutely. mentioned that in the podcast that we're gonna put out here soon about our trip to Cebu, and we're talking about. Mom can listen to my podcast and hear about my trip to Cebu, but I'm also talking about it in terms of networking with other entrepreneurs yeah. and how that affects our business, right? How important was it, you guys, for this is point number two, to have a great product behind your blog? Um, you know, you guys have, you're selling sites. How important is that for motivation? Uh, you know, I can speak to it better if I believe in it, right? I, I think, honestly, you could, sell, you could sell, be selling some product or some crappy thing, and if you're amazingly good at content and you can believe in it, you can probably get it out there and people will connect with it. Um, but me personally, I couldn't speak to it as well if I didn't give a shit. And I have to, it has to be good for me to give a shit. Yeah. And let's, let's face it. Money helps the situation. Right? Absolutely. Yeah. And, and if you have something to sell and there's, the, you see that money coming in, you're more motivated to stick to your content schedule. You're more motivated to come up with creative ideas that you can put on the, on the Brings website. Bring you to a third point, which is what does it mean for you guys to be authentic, honest, and transparent? And this is especially important when you've got your bottom line in mind. Tell me a time. Do you guys ever feel conflicted? Like you sit down and you're like, if I wrote this in my blog post, I'd make a lot more like, money. How yeah. do you make that decision? Like we could sell out, right? Like yeah. basically, okay, let me sell out on this or let me pimp this product because it has a really high commission rate or affiliate deal or whatever. Yeah. Always audience first. I mean, it's absolutely true audience first because once you lose that trust, you, it's really hard to get it back. Yeah, it's like the guide. We thought about selling the guide. And then we just said, you know what? We don't want to be those guys. We don't want to be the, the person that's that's really charging for this kind of content. We want to give that away for free because we want to do the right thing. And we know we have a better product to sell them. Honestly, I just think because I, I tip from my personal perspective, right? And if someone dangles a little bit out there, some like kind of a couple of juicy tips that says all the big tips are behind this paywall. I just think you're an asshole. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I know you're trying to make money and I know it works. I know people are going to pay you. But it doesn't make you less of an asshole. And 
I don't want to be that. I want to be part of the new generation where we go, look, here's how we do it. Here's everything. And be honest. Now, if you want to pay me, that's great. If you don't, that's fine too. But I'm telling you the real deal. But, but I, think, I think there's a difference here, right? So you just said it. I think it's great. Like you talk about audience first. So we talked earlier how people that know me personally know that I have a mouth like a sailor. I swear com- commonly. But you won't find the F word in a lot of my blog posts because my audience would not respond well to that, right? But that's not me being inauthentic, right? That's just me deciding that I'm going to temper what I have to say. Sure. You, but there's a balance there, I, I right? Totally agree. But you, you saying, hey, we're about, info is free, work is paid, right? That's kind of your mantra, right? right? Info is free, work is paid. That's awesome. You can do that, right? But you're never inauthentic about that. Right? So yeah. that's that's the difference, right? So you can have you can have frameworks. You can decide, you know, in my personal life I'm like this, in my private life I'm like this, in my sure. work life I'm like this, and not be inauthentic. Right? You know what's funny, LA? So well, it depends though. If you say like I'm only out to help people, you know, and you're really trying to re- rob people and steal them, then you're a bad guy. Yeah, I mean, there's there's kind of a weird balance you got to strike. Like, are you really the guy who's trying to help as many people as possible? If you, you were, really then why isn't it so? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Joe and I, uh, you're talking about like separating your business life and personal life. We used to be completely separate. Like before we came to the Philippines, like, you know, what we did, personal life, professional is completely separate. And like we've really broken down those walls because really it's you. And if you're going to have an audience and people that pay attention to the shit that you do, like you have to, they have to know you. You have to be a part of that. You have to be like the symbiotic relationship between you and your business that you just, you can't keep those walls up. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's always problems both ways, right? So I have two employees, both of them I would consider friends. I only want to work with people that I respect, that I think are fun and all the rest of it. But it's, it's a challenge both ways. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that doesn't mean you're, 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 you're hanging out in your dirty laundry either, you know, sure. on the podcast, but not yet. Not yet. <laughs> we got point number seven coming up. All right. Point number four. Respond to every email. You guys are telling me you get on tons of e- inbound email. What's your policy when some bonehead writes you an email saying, Justin Cook, I read your thing last night. It was really inspiring. Okay, so first off, I just got my ads inside up. Can you click through to my site and tell me what I should do? What's your response? So, so at first, I didn't know that this was a thing, right? And then I, maybe six months ago or something, I heard Gary Vee talking about when he started off, he responded to every single email. And But I didn't even know. We, we just thought that was good policy. Yeah. So we'd respond to every single email we get. And you're right. Some of them were kind of donk emails, whatever. And some of them were just really friendly and really nice. And I would respond to every single one. Sometimes it'd be short and sometimes it'd be like point by point. There were some though where like, you know, it's so, there's a very small percentage of people that try and take full advantage. I literally had an email that said, okay, here's my eight point email. I need you to respond in detail. Like that was, that was the email. I was like, wow, this guy, it was kind of cool. Like he had balls that big to like, like, okay, just. Just lay out everything to Give my answer. Give me five question. hours of free consulting. <laughs> and so, and so, our answer to that was we created a, a services page, a hire me page. Oh, cool! And like, I still respond to everything. I don't charge anybody, but like, if it gets kind of ridiculous, or they want more work than I can kind of respond to, then we'll just send them that page. Right? I like that. So, so combination of email and blog is a great hammer for products. You're tink tink tink. You get ideas from your from your from your peeps. Yeah, but but I think there was something that you said to me when we were on our little trip. Uh, that was interesting. Even the 14-point guy. There was a lot eight- of things that were interesting about that little trip, by the way. There was a lot of things. <laughs> this is TTR, right? And, <laughs> and, and so... <laughs> Whoa! Yeah, all right. Hey, there's and, no editing here, people. Keep it together. <laughs> yeah, anyway. So the eight-point the, the eight guy, if you do something helpful, right, then you can kind of say, hey, or we can, yeah, I can hire me, and then I can answer all those points for you. When you guys got started, point number five, how did you differentiate yourselves in the marketplace when you get started were you like you know oh there's this blog here and there's that blog here and we got to be different from this guy this way so there were a couple of those a lot of those like fragmented so there were like you know the warriors on the warrior forums that were look at me you know i i have ten thousand posts on the warrior forum and they were followed there but we said why don't we create like kind of a central place for that some of, we kind of like uh, aligned ourselves with someone so for example spencer from nichepursuits.com yeah we aligned ourselves with him started looking at his content and when he would come out with a post like I would say, okay, how can I how can I take that to the next level? Not recreate it, but like how can I advance his arguments, right? right? Or, or argue with his points, right? But like it's it's kind of like a, we do like a back and forth, and him and other sites too. Uh, we'd invite other people on that had great points and have them do battles. So you join the debate. conversations as an authority. Yeah, exactly. but, yeah, but he, it's also like you know we talked earlier about this that innovators make millions, inventors die broke. Right. Yeah. The reality is, is that it's not about coming up with the next big idea. It's about saying, "Hey, I like what they do. 
I think I can make a different angle. I can so for an better. upstart blogger, they should listen to Mixergy, and they should be writing response posts. As exactly. You can't Absolutely. blog in a bubble. You can't right. blog in a bubble. And yeah. I think that that's something that people think, oh, they stick to their content schedule, but it's all about me, 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 them, 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 them. Yeah. And they don't go out there and read other things that are similar in their niche and you know, like link to those things, show, interact with those As blogs. if their content were the only thing you would ever... Uh, once you listen to this podcast with my actionable five tips, you'll that's never it. need to consume any other content. That's it. Again. Just, just read me. In that's fact, if you, there are another podcast. In fact, if you do, it's it's the resistance. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. How how do you have great customer service? Because this is the way you guys make a lot of sales, right? Once you get people on the hook from the blog, what's the customer service policy look like? <laughs> well, well, Joe normally handles customer service, so anytime we get a new customer and they pay us. Then he'll deal with uh, you know following up with them. And the great thing about customer service, or w- one of the interesting things, is that the people that tend to pay you more um, require less customer service. It's normally yeah. the lower dollar people that you know that cost you a lot in terms of time. Um, Justin and I were very lucky in that we had a lot of customer service experience in the corporate world sure. before we got into this. So I kind of just took that really high level professional approach to our site buyers. How long from starting that blog till you had a buy now button up there? What was the timeline? Uh, I think we started putting a, like a basic spreadsheet up uh, about four or five months after we got it started. Is um, that right? A couple, a couple, only a couple of months. So, yeah. so we started the blog, and then we had already just started. We were doing flip auctions. So, actually, originally, we had people from the blog. We were driving traffic to our flip auctions because nice. we would they would bid up, and that's how we were getting the higher prices on flip up, right? And we said, why don't we make this a two way street? So on our flip auctions, which already has its own traffic, not Google traffic, it has Flippa traffic, right. why don't we put some links to AdSense Flipper so they know about our site as well? So it's this great like two-way street where we're pulling in Flippa buyers on the AdSense Flippers and sending our readers off the bid on our auctions. So then when we started selling the sites on our own page, it was you know so natural. Another thing is like, you know, position your blog on a bus- in a business ecosphere. So, you know, like you were saying, like don't or don't have your blog out in the middle of some cornfield somewhere. But you want to be on the thoroughfare. So there's already traffic and interest in things like Flippa and AdSense flipping sites. So if you plug in your site on that highway. But if you're selling aftermarket parts, right, for, for cars or whatever, then you should be all over the car forums and be the guy. Be the, sure. the go-to help guy, right? And then you're answering questions, helping people out. And they go, this guy knows his shit. So that way, when they click on your link from that form, they go, wow, okay, here's where I can get even more information. That's a good point. So your, your blog, your, your understand like this, the free media, and I run a content marketing agency, right? But your free media, stuff you put out in the world for free is important, and it shows your authority, shows you know what you're talking about. The reality is marketing is customer service. Customer service is 20% of your marketing, right? Every customer that you don't service correctly Everyone's a publisher now. They go to Twitter. Yeah. They go to Facebook. They go everywhere else. Everybody. Like it used to be, the old saying was in the 20th century was, you know, make someone happy, they'll tell one person. Make someone unhappy, they'll tell ten people. Now, yeah. make someone unhappy, they tell ten thousand people. Right? To be so. to be very specific, I think that unless the, so Joe Magnati, who's only got 300 followers on Twitter, <laughs> he, hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't tweeted since like September of 2009. Yeah, yeah but so. still, I'm really like pissed. Him. But uh, but, uh, but to be specific about customer service, I think the number one thing is is a quick fo- follow up and turn around after yeah. they after they purchase something uh, followed by clear instructions and then if they do get stuck on something helping them and hand holding them through it and some if, take a lot more work than others but that's just but it just evens out it evens out at the end of the day some are really easy some are, are going to be more difficult what? but if but you, you take need, that you need, and you need to commit approach. to it like you said you have yeah. to commit to it it's, it's similar to, to you know the, the trust bank right so when we put out this free information suddenly we're like jesus we should be charging for this right we i know we could make money on this but we know, okay, well, this is a great deposit in our trust bank, right? I mean, the more yeah. valuable it is and the, the, the freer it is, the more we're putting into that trust bank. So it's the same thing with customer service where, yes, you may be going out of your way to help this guy, but he may be the, the guy that comes back and spends 15 grand with customer service is even more you. important than that. Like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. These this, are buying this, customers. They, have, they gave you money. Right? Yeah, they they yeah. have put money yes. in your PayPal account, yes. right? Great. Those are the guys you go to the ends of the earth for, right? Yeah. That's the, they, I, I, you become referable. You become the, That's how you build. All right, I got to break it up. Break it up, boys. Lucky number seven. Have a list strategy. You guys took the internet marketing Kool Aid right out. You know, at the beginning, you got to have the list set up. You got to have an opt in bait, and you guys built a list. But I want to hear about where did you screw up? I mean, this is the place where you're making your money. Are there things that you've done with your list thus far that you feel like you should have done differently? 
And okay, so while you're thinking about that, that's a tough one. How do you use it? Like, do you now feel like you should advertise every blog post that you write to your list? I mean, when when in which do you engage? Can, that? I, can I be the outside consultant here? Because this, I do think they screw up here. Like, they have such an amazing. Okay, list. first let's describe describe what they're doing right now. Oh, okay, let's understand so they, that. Here's what they've done. They built a list amazingly, right from the very beginning. Built a list and delivered value. They wrote that whole how to build a niche site empire list, the the booklet. I mean, that is a that little. That is a couple f- pages. That is a forty-seven dollar <laughs> paid ebook on almost anyone else's site, right? Yeah. They had they brought their intern out. They spent, I'm going to guess, roughly real money five, six, seven thousand dollars to create this book, right? And in Western terms, we're talking probably twenty thousand dollars of investment to build this amazing, truly readable. You know, just I mean, it is a, it is it is the only ebook. All right, I've all right, read it's, good, it's good. No, no, I'm a big fan. So they've done a great job. The opt-in bribe, amazing. Got people on the list, amazing. Done a great job, amazing. Great content, consistent content. They do not market that list anywhere near enough. They should market more. They should be better at saying, hey, here's our new thing. Here's what we're doing. So, But you guys are out of inventory. Isn't that the issue? No, no. But they, 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 yeah, but we got the new it. brand. So we just we <laughs> launched outsourcing for startups IntelliTheme, right? Which we didn't talk about that much. I, seriously, I sent an email to our list about IntelliTheme. You didn't launch. Drop, yeah, yeah. When, when we, the drop site 20 line. grand in a development cost to build the, the, the most Im- impressive testing theme in AdSense world and then didn't launch. Yeah, well, we didn't really launch, but we we sent an email out, and we we could definitely be more aggressive about that. By but, the way, CTR is up twenty percent yeah. after after activating Across that. That should, yeah. that should be an email. That should be an email. That should be an email to your success. You're not allowed to touch the table, man. <laughs> it's obvious you're on episode number two. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the new. I'm the new. I'm the new. That's linchpin.net. Yes. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so you know, I would say one thing we did with our with our list, which is a really minor thing, but one thing we did uh, was adding a pop up. I mean, that got us a lot oh, more yeah. Yeah. Was, yeah. You know, it's funny because, like, yes, that definitely got us more signups. I'm not sure how valuable and how well those, those signups uh, stuck. So even your number of signups may go up, but the value in those signups may not be as strong. I don't know that that's the case. My my. I'm so sorry, yeah, no, I'm so, I'm so, I'm so okay, excited. I'm, I'm, I'm going to burst. Back up, back up. No, 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 no. no. I know Dana's exploding Lynch, right Lynch now. It's been episode three is about how you build your list and the fact that Tricking people onto your list through pop-ups and welcome gates, yes, you build a list, but does that list become sure, a sure. vanity metric? Okay, or question. If you had ASF's list, since most of us are on it, yep. and so we've seen what they do, what would you do? Justin would write a, our CTR is up 20%. How that, often? That is amazing. So At least once a week. You have to, be, you have to send an email send once an email? a week. Uh, probably twice a month? Not even. Not no. even. No, Once no. every three weeks. Once every three weeks. Once every three weeks. Mm. Other than other than direct response, I'm on, your, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. on your list. Other than a, hey, <laughs> hey, we have new sites, that is not the way to market your list. All right. You, all right. So we got it. Are we got yeah, it. Yeah. No, point that, number, that point is, number eight. This is Tropical Talk Radio. This isn't wax on forever all night long. Number eight. We got to get on to this. Podcast. <laughs> I love busting your balls on my show, buddy. This is fun. <laughs> uh, start a podcast before and after, guys. How has the podcast affected your brand? Uh, heavily. So I, I kind of view the podcast as uh, taking people down like the, the listener or fan funnel, right? So people that were just kind of like casual readers or listeners became like regular readers. Regulars became fans. Fans became super fans. And so the people that listen to our podcast, especially the regular listeners or whatever, are huge fans of the podcast and they feel like they know us. Yeah. So when they email us, it's kind of like this, hey, love what you talked about here. And I'm like, wow, this guy... I mean, how do we, did I did we talk about that six weeks ago? Right. So they know stuff about me. I forget. You know, it's crazy. Uh, it's great for has for it had like a bottom line connection. impact that you guys have noticed and yes, but it's one of those like intangibles. So it's I mean, a, yeah. people people have no problem buying from us though because they listen to our podcast where they're like done. Yeah, 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 you're selling something done, and that's why we're pretty careful about like you know pr- like over promoting things and not really like wanting to waste that trust. You know what I mean? Yeah. I would also say the one thing about podcasting in terms of blogging, I say this all the time, is it's much easier to podcast. For me. It's cheaper than writing, right? You would agree with that, right? Not even cheaper. Like, you get the more authentic me. Because I, if I yeah. write, you're going to get my third draft by the time it's on the, on the website. Sure, right? yeah. When I talk, I Unedited. just talk. Yeah. yeah. So is, is, if someone doesn't have uh, a, an audio portion of their blog, is it just they're totally leaving it on the table? Is it a totally absurd thing? 
I mean, the problem is, is that having a co-host really helps. I think having roundtables, having other people on the show really helps. It's very hard to do a single podcast all by yourself. You're saying this would be shit right now so. if it was just me? <laughs> is that what you're saying? I'm saying it might be a little tough all by yourself. You have to be pretty damn engaging. <laughs> to run a successful podcast by yourself, you have to be yeah, yeah. really engaging. And for most people, it's not a good idea. But option. I would prefer that than another shitty interview podcast. So I don't know. No more interview I'd podcasts. Take a, I'd take a shitty interview podcast over a shitty... No. Well, monotone, talking boring points. Dude. I'm selling my book. Here's my 12 talking points. You're the 12th podcast I've been on. No way. I'll tell you. I'll tell you what. I, you know, the biggest thing is like the, with solo podcasts, it's not about charisma or talking fast or any of that stuff. It's about doing some freaking writing. And you can't just flip on a mic and piss out something interesting. You have to sit down and do the hard work. Correct. It's going to be just as hard as writing a blog post if yeah. you're not having a conversation and mining information from other people. So, all right. No, sorry. sorry. I'm, I know you're going to cut me off, but. This is a great point. Like this, the TTR is if you do, do so say yourself. Yeah, but no, but TTR is your like much less polished podcast. The ones you do. Yeah. But even this one, we spent thirty minutes talking about beforehand, right? So I mean, like, there's no such thing as flipping on the mic and just going. No. I wish there were though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to. I was like clicking back. I would be yeah. very good at that. You guys not so well. <laughs> All right, number nine. <laughs> what is your weekly time commitment? So for people, uh, this is the biggest objection to starting a blog. It's the dumbest one, but it's 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 very. It's not the dumbest one. But how much time do you guys spend on this thing? I mean, how much does it cost? On the podcast itself? Or no, the on the entire total? blog. I mean, this is growing a 6,000 subscriber blog, a powerful blog that could potentially be your retirement package. Way, way, more, way more time for me than for Joe. So I, do, I deal much more with the content. Maybe five hours a week for Joe and probably 25 to 30 hours a week for me. And like, you know, the thing is, is that I realized when I started off doing the content, I was basically working for pennies. I mean, I, I just know that. But what I'm doing is I'm again the, the trust bank, right? So maybe I make a couple of bucks here, a couple of bucks there on a sale, but I know that I'm, you know, I know what I'm worth. And I know I'm depositing that in our trust bank, and eventually that will snowball into way more sales for us. And sometimes I can help Justin with statistics or getting him better uh, stuff to help him write and evolve content. Uh, and then right now, you know, John, who John no longer the intern, John just part of the AdSense Clippers, <laughs> John, 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 yeah, yeah. Uh, John, part of the AdSense Clippers family. He's an employee now, and uh, uh, he's working on a total redesign. So that's, you know, he's working on it 25 hours a week. So, um, yeah, we spend a lot of time and effort and energy. So it's a full-time gig. It's but, a full-time gig to have a, a world-class blog. Yeah, I mean, you spend time or money. So I know for my blog, yep. you know, the reality is that I pay people, my guys, to post on the blog. So they spend six or seven hours per blog post. I spend an, an hour reading it. I've got a, a full-time editor who edits it. I mean, so probably 10 hours per blog post. I mean, there's money. There's money, and I actually pay for that time. Sure. Or otherwise, I would invest my own time. So when I write, it's investment of time. But if you're not willing to invest time in your, literally, your your brochure, your online internet interactive brochure, then you're not serious about what you do. All right, so final question, because you know, you're investing money in this. You invested money for pennies, you believed that the bank would still be there when you went to withdraw. How do you determine dead on arrival status of a blog, a blog that you might blog for three or four months uh, and it's just absolutely not going to go anywhere? How do you have that confidence when you're getting started that it's going to mean something? Well, it's hard because you don't, I mean, if people talk about, well, make sure that you have the numbers and that it's going to work out, but you won't know until waiting all that time to, to see it work out. But there are like signs, right? So like people downloading and like getting emails like, I love this. I've been looking for this type of thing. Comments so the people, emotional comments where people are connected. They feel connected to us. And this is before we were making a bunch of money through site sales or whatever. So I, st I saw that there was something there before we'd actually made any real money on it. Um, this wasn't our main gig either. And I think that helps me is that like I was doing this more because yeah. it was interesting and not because I needed it to you know get bread and water so I could survive. But Damien's having a seizure. <laughs> <laughs> that is the most important thing of the entire thing is. And everyone talks about it and everyone, it's, a, it's a cliche. And people write, a blog is not a business, right? You have to have a business. If the AF blog did not take off, you guys still would have been building niche sites and selling niche sites. I was going to be talking right? about it. Okay. <laughs> you, you'd, be, you know, you'd be selling on Flipper or something else. But, yeah, yeah. but your business was building a process to build profitable niche sites, right? Yeah. Your business was building – Dan's business was building e-commerce businesses, right? So the blogging is a outreach method to attract visitors, potential clients, customers, whatever. But that is not your business. And it is so – 
it wasn't says it's it. a marketing arm. It is, it, 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 and it's even only a piece of your marketing, right? Yeah. The reality yeah. is that is that everyone talks about it and like blog is not a business and yeah, yeah, whatever they want. No, blogging is not a business. I run a content marketing agency. Blogging is not a business. If you don't have my customers are software and SaaS companies. They're not blog companies, you know. The blog is yeah. how you, they attract new users to their real business. You know what's interesting? You have so, to have so that. with Adsense Flippers, like we weren't requiring on that to pay our bills, right? So, so that was, I think, a real advantage for us. But I, I see other people that you know that drive that they have to make money with this site is kind of what led to their success. I mean, which is it? Is it like is are, are you better off? It can with hurt you too, right? Because if, you, if you're too needy. If that if that resolves itself in hustle, you can't that's deposit good. in the trust bank because you're always making withdrawals yeah. to pay the bills. But their right? blog didn't make them money. They weren't sorry. They they weren't. Making, <laughs> <laughs> the the time time just table. just the table again. The hitting the table. <laughs> I'll put my hands in my pockets. Um, the, the reality is the blog is not the business, right? I mean, even if you are a AdSense site where you need traffic and clicks, the blog is not the business. Okay, you but have to have a business. But uh, yeah, I, I think I'm, it was back I'm to pushing the... people to affiliate mm-hmm. links. Let's say I really got to push them because I got to eat. I got to pay my rent and my mortgage, and I'm not going to be able to do that unless I'm pushing these affiliate yep. links. And I think if you're that desperate, that desperation is totally yeah. it's a turnoff. Yeah, that's why you can't start. That's why dead on arrival. Almost all blogs are dead on arrival. You're going to have no traffic. You're going to have no comments. You're going to have no engaged people. And then if you go ahead and you start pushing, you know, affiliate links and all this stuff to people just to make money. And oh, there's no money to be made there there's anyway. No there. Yeah, no one what? knows you. They don't yeah. trust you. They don't. So you have buy to build you. that but trust first by giving away good content by making people engage show, with yourself. Showing first. people you know what you're Affili- talking yeah. about. Affiliate revenue comes from authority, right? You guys have a steady affiliate stream because you have authority in your space, right? If you were just like, hey, 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 please buy Longtail Pro for me. <laughs> I have, if, I, if I had Longtail Pro, please buy for me. Dot com, <laughs> no one's gonna buy that, right? Yeah. All right. If you guys want to see Dead on Arrival, <laughs> check out tropicalmva.com. <laughs> We've got the links to all these good-looking gentlemen's blogs there and the notes of everything we talked about. Thanks for being on the show, guys, and for being great supporters of what I'm doing. Keep me motivated to uh, keep moving the ball forward. Bye, bye, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, go ahead, Joe. Send us off. <laughs> <laughs> this is Joe and I saying, hey, hey. 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 I'm not your clown, bitch. <laughs> Who's the fucking clown now? <laughs>Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. Don't be shy. We've got a mailing list. Check it out at tropicalmba.com. Get yourself signed up, and we'll keep you up to date on everything we do, plus give you those 50 free podcast episodes. If you want to say, hey, check me out on Twitter, at TropicalMBA. We'll see you soon.